Hey guys, lovers, friends, family. My name is Kileb Khile, also known as Stage K, and we are back with another Netflix movies review. Before we get started, I do have to say that all thoughts and opinions stated here are my own. Also, I'm not a professional movie critic. I just enjoy watching movies and giving my opinion on them. That's it. Well, now that we have that out of the way, we can officially get started. Um, the name of the movie that I'm reviewing today is called The Trial of the Chicago 7. The movie was released here in South Africa on Netflix on the 16th of October and I think on the 20th of September in the US. I'm not sure. That's what it says on the internet. And those are the only two release dates that I've got. Speaking of the internet, when I went online, obviously, to do a more in-depth research on the movie, this is what I got from the Wikipedia page. This is how they describe the movie on the Wikipedia page. It says, the film follows the Chicago 7, a group of anti-Vietnam War protesters charged with conspiracy and crossing state lines with intentions of inciting a riot at the 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago. That's what the Wikipedia page says. Um, another thing to notice is that the movie is based on actual events. So all the characters, um, the protests, the court case, those are actual events. Things, those are actually things that took place. Um, ooh, I almost said contrary to the name of the movie, but it's actually not contrary to the name of the movie. So what happened is eight people were actually charged initially at the start of the trial. Eight people were charged with the conspiracy to incite a riot. At the end of the day, only seven people got convicted for it, but I'll explain why. So initially there were eight people charged um, with that, the conspiracy. Bobby Seals. Bobby G. Sills was one of the people that were charged. He was a black man who was the only black man. Um, so he was um, he was a leader of the Black Panther Association, I think in another state. And so what happens is that he gets a call from a friend of his, another Black Panther leader in Chicago. They call him to come into Chicago and give a speech, which is exactly what he does. So he comes to I think the, to the protest he gives the speech and then he leaves so he basically didn't even stay there for long um, in the movie they say he was in Chicago for about four hours and that's it so he came in gave the speech and left that's all he did and so during the trial or the first day of trial he does state that because his lawyer is not there he is able to represent himself the judge doesn't allow him to do that which is wrong because we all know if you don't or if you can't afford to have a lawyer or to have or if you don't want the state or your country or whoever if you don't want legal aid then you are actually able to represent yourself anyway he's not allowed to represent himself he doesn't have a lawyer there and he doesn't want the um, actual lawyer for the Chicago 7 to represent him because he doesn't even know them and then he states in court um, that the reason why he he's even charged in the first place is because they wanted the jury to or rather they wanted to vilify the entire group of people because you know black people are scary I'm, I'm making your quotes as I'm doing this for over. So apparently that's why he was charged in the first place because they wanted to, they wanted to vilify the group to the jury. So the jury would be like, yeah, they definitely did it. And so Bobby Seals was extremely, like, overly mistreated because he is black. Um, so he was mistreated as compared to the other seven because of his race and so I do have to say that there are triggers in the movie like racism, they touch on racism, they touch or they go deeply actually into po police brutality so if you are triggered but if you get overly emotional about such things I'm not, I'm not going to say don't watch the movie 
but I would say watch with caution is what I'm going to say. And also what I really liked about the movie is that they took a slightly comedic approach, but only in the beginning. So they took a slightly comedic ap- comedic as in like funny. Um when the movie was starting in the beginning of the movie which i personally enjoyed because before watching this particular movie i didn't know anything about the 1960 is it 68 or 69 i didn't know about those anti-vietnam or anti-war protests so i liked the fact that they took that comedic approach because that actually kept me engaged to the movie what they also did is that they um, included or incorporated actual footage and pictures from those events from the protests and from the time and era so I like that a lot it gave it a more how do I say so it was a movie but it gave it a more documentary feel as well so what you get is you get comedy in the beginning quite comedic quite slightly funny not too funny not like crazy funny but you know interesting like oh this is cool and then once the movie starts to actually go on once you get into the movie then they become more like a bit more serious and then they include the pictures, the footage, and you're just like, wow, I'm not sure if I'm watching a documentary or a movie. I like that. I've never seen that before in like a movie. It is a very political movie. I would say it's, it's about, the concept is about police brutality, it's about injustice, there's racism, um, there's a touch of racism. So it's quite political which is ironically very super actually relevant right now so it's very political in that manner um which is why i did say earlier on the movie is very triggering for it would be very triggering for other people if you are an emotional person the you you will be triggered by this movie the talent in this movie i do have to say is is crazy they have a very they got a rather impressive ensemble cast um so they have people like sasha baron cohen whom i personally love i mean i love that man um they have people like eddie redmayne jeremy strong john carol lynch um the character of bobby g Seals is actually played by a man called yaya abdul martin the second if I'm being honest, I've never seen this guy's work before, but I loved him. He he portrayed this character quite well, very well actually. You know, they also have people like Michael Keaton and Joseph Levitt. So they have a great bunch of actors in the movie, which is great. I love that. I enjoyed that. So all in all, I really enjoyed the movie. I loved everything about the movie. You know, the cinematography was very, they captured the timeline quite well. I loved the transition of events. It was, the movie was great. If I were to rate the movie, I would give it a 9 out of 10. You know, I never give it 10 out of 10 because I always feel like there's been some improvement in anything. But it was quite close to perfection. That's all I'm going to say. Very close to perfection well that concludes the video and like i said in the beginning of the video all thoughts and opinions are my own i'm not a professional movie critic i just love watching movies and giving my opinions and that's it if you like the movie or rather the video if you like the video please leave a thumbs up comment if you agree with me and even if you don't comment down below and we can have a conversation Thanks for watching. Peace, love and light to all of you. Goodbye.